That's right. It's been one year since I was blessed with the 35mm RF from Canon to the 1.8. I mixed all of that up. Whatever. And I thought I'd do a little video talking about the lens itself and this focal length and why I love it. Blah, 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 blah. Now, this is not going to be like a full review and like, oh my God, look at the build quality. I mean, I do talk about the build quality, but... Uh, not to an extent, I guess, but more so how it's changed my style of shooting and how and why I like it. It's not going to be so in depth. I'm really shit at explaining things like this. But before we get into that, let's go to the POV that uh, I decided to put in with this video. So welcome back to Surface Paradise guys, as per usual, using the 35mm, of course, that would be stupid to not use that in this video, um, but if you don't know how it works, uh, for some photos, well, for photos that I like, or mostly like, I will include the preset used, and of course, the settings. Now, the settings don't really change much, generally it sits at 1 over 500 f8, which is normally what I like to shoot, um, and then just auto ISO. So. How it normally works is I, once I see the ISO is creeping too high, I'll end up, you know, fiddling with the other settings, mostly aperture first, and then I'll probably end up doing something with the shutter speed. Now, I normally like to keep the shutter speed pretty fast, especially for street photography, uh, unless I'm doing other creative shots. So yeah, there's me explaining myself. Now we're going to head over to the markets now and I had quite a bit of fun here and I took my first favourite shot just here. Now with this one my idea was the green pants on the left, the green shirt on the right and the green tent in the background were meant to match up a bit better but didn't end up working the way I wanted it to. Also, in regards to presets, uh, you can learn about that later on in the video when I plug it, I guess. Just after this shot, I seen a kid having a bit of a tantrum on the ground here. So I figured this would be a funny little moment to capture. And then after this bit, I came around the side just to get a little bit closer and get this shot here. Now, if you're also wondering why I have the screen closed on my camera, um, I tend to it's kind of just to be a bit more sneakier. So if I'm, let's say there's people walking behind me and I take photos of people in front of me, they can see that they could, they'll probably think that my camera's off and I'm not even taking photos. So I don't know, that's just me being an anxious motherfucker. <laughs> Now coming up is an older gentleman with a walking stick and I did a sneaky chest shot for this one. Bam. up 
from the left hand side here is a guy that was making this face the whole time I was walking up so I thought definitely need a shot at him. Now unfortunately I kind of cropped his head off but I still think it's an interesting photo. Now, as you can see, this guy in front of me has a pretty damn colorful shirt on, and I couldn't fig really figure out a way how to, I don't know, compose a shot, including that shirt. So I just took a couple of random shots here. Hey, so not too bad. I do like this one though, because I got a pretty clear bit shot of that lady's face there. pretty interesting shot I just really like the red going on here but um, I I kind of noticed around this point or just after just up just here that I was shooting a little too low so for this one I brought the camera up just a little bit more so I can get the subject in center frame look at that much more better now um, this is pretty much where the POV ends so I'm gonna show you about four photos that I took afterwards So I picked this lens up for about $400 Australian dollars and so far it's been one of my best purchases I've ever I've ever made for photography in general. I've used this so many times like it's essentially glued to my camera. Um, it would be on there right now if it wasn't too punched in because I need to use the 24 to 70. I've just been using it so often it's, it's like 90% of my photos I've ever taken. Um, in the past year or so has been with this lens. Now we'll talk about a couple of reasons why I like it, the size, the weight, uh, and the autofocus performance. So the size of it, it's it's a pretty decent little size. Um, I wish it was a bit smaller, but it does have image stabilization. So I guess I can trade off for that. Now with the build quality, uh, I don't know if you've ever bought, uh, ever felt any of the RF lenses, but it is of a plastic build. However, it's very solidly plastic, like, I don't know how to explain it. It still feels really nice. It's not like an L lens, however, it's still tough. I mean, that's the uh, plastic, plasticiness of it. It does have the control ring at the top and then the focus ring here. So I never really seem to have a, a use for the control ring. Um, I think it's, I think I have it set to exposure compensation, but I normally just use the screen for it because I don't adjust my exposure compensation on the fly um, constantly. I, I kind of just adjust it and then use it at that that exposure compensation for a bit and then I'll change it back to however I want it. So it's, it's I mean, we could put ISO or shutter speed on this, but I need to use my other hand to really to get this anyway. So because all the other settings are on the one hand, it it's doesn't seem to be a point to even use a control ring. I don't understand the control ring too much. Um, I understand a few buttons and stuff like on Sony lenses, but the control ring, I don't understand because yeah. Now the autofocus, um, it's surprisingly it's not too bad. So if you could just imagine the Nifty 50, if you have the Nifty 50, I think it's just like slightly better than the Nifty 50. Now in the low light, in low light situations, it's much better than the Nifty 50. And if you don't know, I actually have the very rare Viltrox 85 millimeter uh, RF mount version lens. Fuck, I butchered that again. If we're talking about autofocus compared to that, it absolutely shits on that Viltrox 85 millimeter lens, especially in low light. So very surprising how good the autofocus is here. 
Um, I've had comments asking if it's a bit loud um, and honestly, I mean, it makes a noise, but when I'm doing street photography or event photography, there's already a lot of noise. So it's not really a big deal, I guess. If you're doing video and you're using the camera mic, the in-camera mic, uh, I could see this being a bit noisy, but I still find the Nifty 50 more louder than this lens here. And this lens seems to focus a bit quicker, so you don't get as much noise for as long as time anyway. So yeah, $400 second hand, um, perfect condition. I actually traded in a few things for it. I had like a, an old lens, an old camera, and then I made up the difference. I think it was like a hundred dollars difference or something. But honestly, that, that trade that I did with things that I wasn't using was perfect because I use this so much now. Now let's talk about first impressions with this lens and my experience over time. First impressions, I found this to be quite wide. Um, mostly because I was used to shooting 50mm and 85mm, but I wanted to go wider and I found myself needing to remember to get a bit closer to the action to be able to take photos that I wanted to take. But then on the contrary, when I started using other lenses uh, after using this for a bit, when I was using the 50mm or the 85mm, um, I realized that they were way too punched in to get what I wanted. I also found myself being able to hit fire a lot more successfully, obviously because it's wider. And honestly, I'm still thinking of going wider, like maybe to a 28 millimeter. And the other thing is the, the 28 millimeter has been very um, tempting to me because of its pancake size. So it's more of a, a daily carrier rather than this. And I'll probably fall in love with that lens too, but I could imagine this lens and that lens would go pretty well together when I'm when I'm doing like a street photography session, I could switch between them. This, this, uh, this, that, this lens, that lens, and maybe the 50 millimeter would be like a perfect combo, I think. Now, when I got this lens, it I very quickly realized that the context of a photo is pretty damn important as well. And the my previous favorite lens before this one was the 85 millimeter. And that was mostly because of, you know, the Bokalicious 1.8, and compression of the 85 millimeter. As I've grown as a photographer, I realized that I like context more. And now that I shoot more at like F8 or F10, depending on the lighting, of course. And I kind of like to get a lot of things in focus um, that's happening in the scene. Very rarely where I shoot at F1.8, unless it's nighttime or if I'm doing like a portrait session. Um, it's, it's super rare that I shoot at that, that aperture. And having a lot of subjects in focus, especially when they're they're all doing something unique or different to each other, um, I just feel like is beneficial for taking pretty cool photos. Now, I also found myself shooting more photos with this. Now, I don't know if that's because it's wider and I just have more things to shoot, so I can just shoot it. Now, I'm not sure why that is, but with the 85 millimeter, when I switch to that, I tend to be a lot more picky and choosy and I miss a lot of photos. And the problem with that is when I come home, I don't come back with many photos or any good ones, if that. Sometimes a lot of the photos that I randomly take with the 35 millimeter uh, end up being good photos or, or just photos that I really like and thought that would be shit photos. But And I have a lot of room to crop, so if I need a crop, I do crop. And um, if, if you haven't seen any of my videos, I actually do crop a lot. No, I don't care about <laughs> not getting it right in the camera sometimes, especially for street photography, mind you. If you're getting paid for it, I think you should be focusing on it more. But for street photography, because it's a hobby, because I'm just screwing around, because I'm just having a bit of fun, um, I'm not too worried. If I can see that in my, if I can see in the back of the camera that I'm like, okay, I have room to crop here to make this scene better, then I'm more than happy to just crop it and to make it look better. So yeah, with the 85 mil, I tend to, be very picky and choosy and also I can only shoot like portrait with the 85 mil because it's so punched in I find horizontal scenes very hard to to take photos of which which has come to another point where I've been shooting a lot of horizontal scenes with the 35 mil and I absolutely love horizontal or landscape orientation photos and on the note of uh, being closer because it's wider, being closer to potential scenes is so much more beneficial than 
being further away with an 85 mil. I feel like when you're closer to a potential fun scene, to a potential fun photo, is better than standing back because you get to feel it a bit more and uh, you get to figure out what's going to happen. If you can overhear what they're saying, maybe, maybe something's about to happen, maybe someone's telling a funny story and they and you're waiting for that laugh to come along, then you can hear that story coming. You can predict that there's a laugh or something crazy about to happen. But with the 85, you kind of sit back and I, I see scenes all the time with the 85 and I'm always too late to shoot it just because I'm so far back. But with the 35, because I'm focusing on more of my closer proximity, I tend to be able to just flick the camera over and get those photos. A lot of the times when I have the 85mm and I walk past these moments that I can take photos of um, with the 35mm, I end up kicking myself because I have two punched in at a focal length. So if I were to shoot that same shot that I could get, uh, I could get a really nice photo with the 35mm, but I have the 85mm on, I would be taking a photo of someone's forehead and that's it. Now, weirdly enough, uh, having 35 mil has helped me take, well, get closer to subjects, obviously, but take closer photos of the subjects. I don't know if that makes any sense because what I'm trying to say is with the 85, you can take close photos of them by being far, right? But with the 35 mil, for some reason I took, I take more photos, more close up photos of them, even though it's, it should be harder to because because it's a bit more nerve-wracking, I guess. But this has helped me a bit be more stealthier in a really weird way. If I see someone walking towards me and I stand off to the side, I can just hold that angle for ages and pretend that I'm not even taking photo of them, even though they're center frame and pretty close in my photo. And the thing is with the 35mm, because it's so wide, there's so much more area for my autofocus to lock onto to be able to get a, a, a cool photo of a subject coming through. Now obviously I've, I've done pre-focusing, even like zone focusing before, but sometimes I just can't be screwed switching um, between modes. So if they come into the frame like this, my autofocus can see it, lock onto it, and then by the time they're in the middle of the frame where I want them to be, I take the photo. And it's quite a bit of room, so I have a bit of wiggle room to be able to turn the camera very slightly and be able to get them even more shots of them walking off. But with the 50 and the 85 mil, um, because the 50's autofocus is a bit slower, it doesn't really grab in time and plus people are much closer. So if they were like here, as you can see, there's not much room. So if they're walking, there's not enough time for the autofocus to actually grab onto the to the subject and be able to take the photo right here. Where if it's back here, there's a lot more time I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's just how I see it. I've also gained an interest in shooting more minimalistic compositions, um, not just for street photography, but even for like travel photography and landscape photography, I guess. This isn't my preferred focal length for landscape photography, but when I'm traveling and I just want one good lens, this will be the lens that I choose most of the time. This or the 50 mil. Now, I know there's a lot of downsides of the 50 mil, but it's compact and it works so that's kind of why I choose that as well but this is a little bit bigger and it has a certain look that I really like about it so I'll always choose this but yeah the minimal I just got sidetracked but the minimalisticness of some of my photos uh, not even just minimalistic just like the mundane sort of scenes that I've been taking photos of lately like this one I've never really been interested in them until I started shooting with a 35 mil and I end up taking more photos of scenes um, with the subject being small on them as well. So it's kind of helped me explore different styles of shooting, different styles of making up a composition, different styles of, of lining people up in different places and different ways to use lighting, I guess. Now, of course, I've said this before, uh, I think it was in my 85 millimeter video, but this lens, it just, it just makes you feel closer to the scene um, within the photo. So not just when you're actually shooting, but after I take the photo, I just, I feel like I'm there like I have a memory of this exact moment. But if I, if I see my 85 millimeter photos or even my 70 to 200 millimeter photos, I tend to feel disconnected. Like the technology has made the look, not the scene itself. And sometimes I like that. Sometimes I really like how that looks, um, especially for cars. Um, this is definitely the, the focal length that I don't use for cars most of the time. I don't use this. I don't like 35 millimeters when I'm shooting cars. However, for people, this is definitely my favorite lens.
Now we'll just conclude this little video. Now the reason why I would recommend this lens is because in the RF lineup we know that a lot of the lenses are very expensive and and a lot of them give you that unique look that you're looking for compared to let's say a 50 millimeter or your kit lens. But the thing is this is affordable and it's an RF mount. It's a native RF mount. It has stabilization, it has the control ring. It's pretty much got anything you really need. Like seriously, I know it's only f1.8, but I think f1.8 is totally fine for me. I've never really seen, I've never really had a need to go lower than f1.8. f1.4 and f1.2 would be very cool, but I just, I just don't find myself in that many low light situations that I would need to spend about five times more money on something that can shoot just a little bit more light. Now I know there's other build quality things going with it and better autofocus, but it's just, is it really like $3,000 more than this? And um, as I've kind of hinted before, street photography isn't the only thing that I use this for. I use this for event photography. I use this for portrait photography and pretty much the same things apply where you feel like you're in the scene and the, the photos just feel more authentic if if that for a lack of a of a better term it's just it just feels it just feels better and I, i'm way more happy with my photos at this focal length now there's rumors floating around of an rf 35 millimeter 1.4 l lens and honestly i've thought about wanting it but i just cannot see the reason why i would spend that much more money for something that will basically be this but just slightly better or maybe a lot better but the results i get with this from everything that i've mentioned in this video from autofocus from oh i haven't actually mentioned the image quality image quality is fine it's it's fine it's totally usable it's 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 a lens that came out very recently like obviously the image quality is totally fine so we'll just get that out of the way but long story short this lens is definitely best bang for your buck if you have you probably have a nifty 50 if, if you don't have many lenses and you have an rf mount you probably have a nifty 50 already great lens if you have the 85 millimeter f2 that's a fine lens too i have the viltrox 85 millimeter f1.8 but you can't get those anymore so i wouldn't recommend that unless you can find one and if you want to complete the kit and you don't want to spend too much money i think i i, I would recommend this lens 100 percent like 35 mil f1.8 you cannot go wrong i guarantee you'll love it um, unless you just really like compressed photos. I feel like this lens will be glued to my camera for a long time in the future. So lens itself, good, good lens. Focal length, amazing, amazing focal length. And if you like videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. Also, tell me your favorite photo from the POV. I forgot that I'm putting a POV in front of this. And remember, if you don't go out and take shit photos, you'll never take any good photos if you don't take shit photos. And that's true. See you in the next one. Oi, if you like how I edited these photos on this video, you wouldn't believe it, but I have three preset packs that I just dropped. And the first one specifically for daytime shoots. These are the presets I basically use every time I go out and shoot some stuff during the day. And they aren't just normal color presets. They also include four film presets and five black and white presets. But I wanna shoot at night. That's crazy because I also have a night preset pack that you can get. Now this is the preset pack I use when I'm shooting low light scenes and includes two film presets and two cyberpunk inspired presets. Yeah, but I shoot a day and night. Well, obviously I thought of that and I have Demix Dual Damage. Now that includes everything that I said before in the dailies preset pack, in the night preset pack, and it's all combined into one little pack. So just to clarify, the dailies has 25 presets, four film, five black and white, and the nights one has 20 presets, two film, two cyberpunk. If you combine all that together, it's 44. They are currently on sale right now on my website. If you go down in the description, if you know how to work on YouTube, find the presets and prints little thing with the link there, go to it. And if you do purchase these and edit with these presets, Show me the results.